No. I guess I better get up. Looks like overtime again, son. Spending all our money on the useless military, we should be spending that money over 
here because I don't have enough money in my welfare check. I need to get some more. <laughs> Hey man, tired of the war on terror, all the endless debt, the police state? Check out this video, man! I thought I told you to leave. Freedom of speech! Freedom of speech! Oh, cool. Why would anybody buy organics? So expensive. Santos added fluoride must be good Nothing on TV. Oh yeah, InfoWars. This is no time for ceremony. The question before the house is one of awful moment to this country. For my own part, I consider it nothing less than a question of freedom or slavery. And in proportion to the magnitude of the subject ought to be the freedom of the debate. It is only in this way that we can hope to arrive at truth and fulfill the great responsibility which we hold to God and our country. Mr. President, it is natural to man to indulge in the illusions of hope. We are apt to shut our eyes against a painful truth, and listen to the song of that siren till she transforms us into beasts. Is this the part of wise men, engaged in a great and arduous struggle for liberty? Are we disposed to be of the number of those who having eyes see not, and having ears hear not the things which so nearly concern their temporal salvation? my part, whatever anguish of spirit it may cost, I am willing to know the whole truth, to know the worst, and to provide for it. The affirmative task we have now is, uh, is to actually um, uh, create uh, uh, a new world order. The I think that right now the question is, do we all work for central bankers? That's what I want to address to our guest tonight. Is this global governance at last? Is it one world, the central bankers in charge? Jim, Jim Urio, you say we've got some downside here, a correction in the markets, fine. But aren't we all just living and dying for what the central banks do? Aren't we all just counting on the fact that there's a Bernanke put, put and that we won't go any lower than, say, 5% uh, down from here? To answer your question, we are absolutely slaves to central banks. Why are American troops now helping Afghan farmers grow that opium? In western Kandahar, poppy farmers score, kill, harvest their crop, and the Americans do nothing to stop them. We have never invested as much in public education as we should have because we've always had kind of a private notion of children. We haven't had a very collective notion of these are our children. So part of it is we have to break through our kind of private idea that kids belong to their parents. Not our queens. You are not our kings. 
You are not our gods. We do not belong to you. We are not your slaves. We stand as free humans and stood since the beginning of time against the strong men, against the thugs, against the bullies. We will defeat your world government. There is nothing which I dread so much as a division of the Republic into two great parties, each arranged under its leader and concerting measures in opposition to each other. This, in my humble apprehension, is to be dreaded as the greatest political evil. Country, I mean, the Democrats and the Republicans have been in charge of this country for over a hundred years, and look at the shape we're in. We have a national debt that's out of control. Uh, they send us to wars that we shouldn't be fighting in, meaningless wars. We voted for the president because he had indicated maybe he would have a different foreign policy. Uh, and I think they're very disappointed because he has expanded the wars rather than diminishing them. If you come to the conclusion that Republicans and Democrats aren't too much different from each other, then there are no choices. We don't have really good democracy in this country. Just like the street gangs, only they're worse because the street gangs only affect a minority amount of people in the areas they're located. The Democrats and Republicans affect each and every American in the decisions that they make and what they do. What if the widely perceived differences between the two parties was just an illusion? What if those vaunted differences between Democrat and Republican were actually just minor disagreements? What if both parties just want power and are willing to have young people fight meaningless wars in order to enhance that power? Merchants have no country. The mere spot they stand on does not constitute so strong an attachment as that from which they draw their gains. If people let the government decide what foods they eat and what medicines they take, their bodies will soon be in as a sorry a state as the souls of those who live under tyranny. Dr. Harriet Fraud believes Big Pharma has manufactured a climate of insanity by manipulating and even creating illness for capital gain. The advertising strategy is to have vague diagnoses and then find wiggle room so that they apply to everybody. What you have is a whole network of doctors who are hustling these drugs. If a patient comes in with a knee injury and says, "Ugh, oh, I'm so sad. Oh, are you depressed? Hey, write a prescription. They're given out like M&Ms. The health insurance industry alone has six lobbyists for every member of Congress, and more than 500 of them are former congressional staff members. Just these protesters are taking a bite into the issue of genetically modified foods. By confronting the two entities they say are responsible for food secrecy, the Food and Drug Administration and the biotech giant Monsanto. With GMOs, you have to try very hard to not eat a GMO food in this country. It's not like... It would be hard not to. Today, more than 90% of all corn, soybean and canola in the U.S. comes from genetically modified seeds. Monsanto has said that genetically modified seeds and foods are presumed to be safe, presumed safe. Here it is, Monsanto says, quote, there is no need to test the safety of DNA introduced into genetically modified crops. And they go on to say, there is no need for or value in testing the safety of GM foods in humans. If you eat genetically modified foods, you are absorbing information from those foods that can potentially cause cancer in your body. A passionate attachment of one nation for another produces a variety of evils. Sympathy for the favorite nation, facilitating the illusion of an imaginary common interest in cases where no real common interest exists, and infusing into one the enmities of the other, betrays the former into a participation in the quarrels and wars of the latter without adequate inducement or justification. Uh, many reports uh, that talks about the influence of the uh, Israeli lobby, the AIPAC, 
on United States politics in general? Well, every candidate for Congress at that time had a pledge. They were given a pledge to, to sign. And uh, so the pledge had Jerusalem as the capital city, uh, the military superiority of Israel. American Congress people have to sign this pledge. Yes, you sign the pledge. If you don't sign the pledge, you don't get money. So you, His Excellency Benjamin Netanyahu, Prime Minister of Israel. I do see a lot of old friends here. And I see a lot of new friends of Israel here as well. Democrats and Republicans alike. Israel has no better friend than America, and America has no better friend than Israel. As President, I've therefore made it clear America's commitment to the security of the State of Israel is a solemn obligation. Today, our military and intelligence personnel cooperate more closely than ever before. We conduct more joint exercises and training than ever before. In short, and I don't think this is just my opinion, I think, Bibi, you would share this, uh, America's support for Israel's security is unprecedented, and the alliance between our nations has never been stronger. And finally, we continued our close consultation on Iran. We agree that a nuclear-armed Iran would be a threat to the region, a threat to the world, and potentially an existential threat to Israel. And we agree on our goal. We do not have a policy of containment when it comes to a nuclear Iran. Our policy is to prevent Iran from acquiring a nuclear weapon. The United States will continue to consult closely with Israel on next steps. And I will repeat, all options are on the table. If we run into such debts as that must be taxed in our meat and in our drink, in our necessaries and our comforts, in our labors and our amusements, for our callings and our creeds, as the people of England are, our people like them must come to labor sixteen hours in the twenty-four, and give the earnings of fifteen of these to the government for their debts and daily expenses and the sixteenth being insufficient to afford us bread, we must live as they do now on oatmeal and potatoes, have no time to think, no means of calling the mismanagers to account, but be glad to obtain subsistence by hiring ourselves to rivet their chains around the necks of our fellow sufferers. And this is the tendency of all human governments. A departure from principle in one instance becomes a precedent for a second, that second for a third, and so on, till the bulk of the society is reduced to be mere automatons of misery, to have no sensibilities left but for sinning and suffering. And the forehorse of this frightful team is public debt. Taxation follows that, and in its train, wretchedness and oppression. No free man shall be debarred the use of arms. The strongest reason for the people to retain their right to keep and bear arms is as a last resort to protect themselves against tyranny in government. Is that we just have to be repetitive about this. It's not enough to simply have a, a catchy ad on a Monday and then only do it every Monday. We need to do this every day of the week and just really brainwash people into thinking about guns in a vastly different way. The assault weapon. The assault weapon is developed for military purposes to kill in close combat. And um, it doesn't belong in the streets of our cities. Well, he is actively supportive of, for example, Senator Feinstein's uh, stated intent to revive uh, a piece of legislation that would uh, reinstate the assault weapons ban. What I haven't heard is one coherent reason why any civilian in America needs an AR-15. Why do they need those weapons? They need them for the prospective possibility of resistance to tyranny, which is not a concern today. It may not be a concern tomorrow. Who are you expecting it could the be, tyranny to come from? It could come from the United States because governments have gone tyrannical before. Do you understand? This is 
We are at a state in Canada where they don't want you using firearms for anything, ever. And that's the push. And as we look at what's happening in the United States, that's where they're headed. So I've got a warning to my American friends. Registration will lead to confiscation. And if you don't believe me, just look at what's happened here. It is in vain, sir, to extenuate the matter. Gentlemen may cry, peace, peace, but there is no peace. The war is actually begun. The next gale that sweeps from the north will bring to our ears the clash of resounding arms. Our brethren are already in the field. Why stand we here idle? What is it that gentlemen wish? What would they have? Is life so dear or peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? Did it, almighty God. I know not what course others may take, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death. Wow, I'm dumping this stuff. <laughs> See you later, Beebler. All right, it's here. Sweet. All right. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah.